Hi, everyone. This is a Yahoo News special report. I'm Bianca Goladriga in New York. This morning, a major capital city in Iraq has fallen to ISIS. So can anything be done at this point to prevent the entire country from coming under control of the Islamic State? ISIS militants likely killed up to 500 people, both Iraqi civilians and soldiers, and forced 8,000 to flee from their homes as they captured the city of Ramadi. Ramadi is the capital of Anbar province, a large desert region, and the Iraqi government just announced last month it was hoping to save in a major military offensive. Joining me now for more on this is Stephen Bucci, director at the Heritage Foundation. Stephen, thank you so much for joining us. And I guess the first question is, how big of a setback is this? Uh, it's a pretty significant setback. The uh, Ramadi is the, the capital of Anbar province, the, the westernmost province in Iraq. Uh, they thought they had ISIS stopped, and now for them to take this city, pretty big setback for the Iraqi military. Yeah, in the meantime, the U.S. and Iraqi officials are saying that this is just temporary, that they, the tide will turn back against ISIS. Is this just wishful thinking? Uh, well, I hope it's not just wishful thinking. But again, in the midst of this fight, the American-led coalition only made 19 airstrikes in support of the now fleeing Iraqis. That's still kind of anemic. Uh, I think we really need to be doing more. We still don't need American troops you know, conventional troops, but I think a few more of our special operators and more air is really needed. So you don't think that we need boots on the ground? Senator McCain seemed to allude to that when he spoke about this this morning. Uh, well, th this is, again, that debate. I would like to see us try to use more of our special operators together with the Iraqi military and up the amount of air that we kick into this before we move to that next step of trying to deploy conventional troops. When you hear about how ISIS overtook the city, I mean, the equipment they use, explosive-laden bulldozers, other vehicles driven by suicide bombers, this isn't really high-tech weaponry on their end. So what does that say about the Iraqi soldiers that we spent billions of dollars helping and training? Well, it's a warfare of this nature, particularly in an urban environment, is not really high-tech. Having too much high tech is not necessarily that big an advantage. Uh, it, it, and if these guys are willing to die in the process, they're doing suicide attacks, that, that's tough to, to combat. Well, well, let me ask you, where does Iran fall in here? I mean, the, the paramilitary forces that the Iraqis are now bringing in and deployed back, aren't they backed by Iran? Uh, the Shia militias that the prime minister has now said he is uh, called upon to go in there to try and combat ISIS, have advisors with them from the Iranian Quds Force commandos, so they're special operators. Uh, I would like to see our special operators in with the rest of the uh, Iraqi military so that we don't need to depend on the Shias. The Shias going into a Sunni city is not a real recipe for success. Well, are we sure we're not too late for that? I mean, isn't this already inflaming sectarian tensions? Uh, it is, and uh, depending on what the Shia militias do when they get there, if they turn around and not only, quote, liberate the city, but then persecute the, the Sunnis that are there, the civilians, all they're going to do is drive more people into the hands of ISIS. We really can't allow that to happen. And hopefully we can preclude it, but it's not uh, not a guarantee by any means. Let me ask you, does this headline overshadow the, the headline over the weekend, uh, the Delta forces that, that came in um, into Syria and, and killed the ISIS money man, as they call him, Abu Sayyaf, and, and uh, took his wife in for custody? Uh, well, I don't know if they overshadow one another. They're both big, important stories. But remember, as important as taking out one leader is, that doesn't win a battle. Taking terrain, capturing cities, that, that's pretty significant. So, yeah, if, if I was going to weigh the two, I'd say ISIS taking Ramadi is a bigger step back than our uh, Delta Force guys going in and taking out that one leader. So they have Ramadi, they have Mosul, and yet Secretary Kerry and others uh, seem to say that ISIS is weakening. Is that true in your opinion? Uh, you know, I talked to several of my colleagues about that before coming up here for the interview, and uh, one of them said, gosh, we got to be careful we don't sound like Saddam Hussein's 
uh, public affairs guy who was saying they were winning the battle while there were American tanks in the background of the picture. Uh, we, we need to probably be a little more cautious about what we say uh, over or excuse me, under promise, over deliver is better than, than bombastic words. And we're now approaching a presidential election. It's, it's shocking that, that Iraq is still going to be at the forefront as far as the debates go. Is there a future out specifically with the route that the U.S. and Iraqis are taking now? Uh, I, one hopes so, because the alternative is just to give up and, and let ISIS or Iran take over Iraq completely. I don't think that's in the interest of the Iraqi people. I don't think it's in the United States' interest or that of any of our allies. So uh, I hope we can continue to try. I'd like to see us stop short of, of big conventional uh, deployments, which I don't think anybody really wants. Uh, but we, we've got to fight the battle. We can't just wish this problem away. And last question, how would you rate the president's handling of the situation with ISIS and in Iraq particularly? Uh, I, I've said before, I think this response is insufficient. It's weak. It's not wrong, but it's not enough to do what the president has claimed his policy wants to do. We need to have more air assets involved, more airstrikes. We need to have more of our special operators to make those airstrikes even more effective than they can be. Uh, it, we're just not doing enough yet. And, and the question now is whether Congress and the American people will agree that more should be done. So obviously this discussion will continue. But I want to thank you so much, Stephen, for joining us and giving us your insight today. Thanks for having me. And again, this has been a Yahoo News special report. Thank you for watching.